Now as a consequence of the cos graph being zero at those two points, what's going to happen to the tan graph if your cos graph, your denominator, is zero? What does that mean for tan? Some of you have already drawn the shape, so you know, you've got it right there. Starts with an A. Say it, say it loud, apparently. You get an asymptote, right? Because you can't exist when you're dividing by zero. So if you haven't already, go through and put in your asymptote at pi on 2, as well as at 3 pi on 2. OK, like so. Quick show of hands, who's drawn their tan graph? OK, about, about a third of you, that's fine. For the rest of you, let's have a go at the rest of it. We're going to start down low, and then we're going to come up towards the asymptote, <coughs> like so. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to remind you that every single trigonometric function that you're graphing, it has a period, right? It repeats. It's got this frequency, right? What's the period? What's the length that it takes for the sine or cosine graph to repeat itself, to get a full copy? It's, say it again, how many radians? It's 2 pi, right? From 0 to 2 pi, and then you just start the same thing over again. 10, though, is different. Its period is not 2 pi. What's its period? It's, it's half of that. It's pi. So here's 0. Pi is over here. right? So from 0 to pi, you get the same shape, just copied over. right? So this shape that we just drew here, um, it's going to repeat, like so. Okay? And if I went another pi radians over, I would get another copy. Okay, but I'm lazy, I'm just doing it here. What is the other half? I've drawn half of the tan graph now. What does the other half look like? But isn't um, the, um, the minus, the negative section? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, perfect. It's that same shape, isn't it? But it's actually reflected back that way. In fact, we've got rotational symmetry on the whole graph. So if you go ahead, do that same shape there, and you copy it 180 degrees over, okay? Or pi radians. Um, we'll put our values on here. Zero. Pi, 2 pi. Are you guys happy with that tan graph? Y equals 10 x. Happy? Max gives me a thumbs up. Thank you. Anyone else happy? I think it looks good too, but I think it's missing something. I think it's missing one small thing. Can anyone think of what this might be missing? The one and the negative. Say it again. The, the one and the negative one. The one and the negative one. The one and the negative one. Why did I have one and negative one on these graphs? Why did we put them in? Yeah, there's a there's a, there's a finish to the graph. There's an there's an end point, right? Does the tan graph have an end point? No, it just it just goes forever. What's our language for this, by the way? Our, you were doing this thing with your arms. We talked about domain before. This is domain. What's this thing? Range. Very good. So you've got a range here, negative one to one. You've got a range here, negative one to one. What's the range for this? Yeah, we can write this in two ways. We can write it in interval notation, or we can write it with um, set notation. Okay. So we could say uh, for this one here, I'm going to get rid of my bad graph now. Okay, so our range here, this one we would write it as, uh, let's see, we could say negative 1 to 1. What's the way we would do this with interval notation, by the way? Do you remember it? Negative 1. Negative 1. Square bracket on the left. Uh, yeah, square bracket on the left. Comma. Comma. Positive 1. Positive 1, and then another square bracket. Okay. Um, same thing for this. This is the same graph. But here, right, our range, well, if we wrote this in interval notation, it's going to be, someone said negative infinity, right? And all the way to positive infinity. What do I have on the outsides? Do I have square brackets? I'm going to have curly brackets. Why? Why curvy, curvy brackets? Yeah, you can't ever, you can't ever get there as a final thing, right? Uh, that's in interval notation. How would I write that using this? Yeah, all real values of why you could write it like that if you didn't want to use the word or real values of y. All right. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this is number one, you need to remember it. Number two, negative one and one are not as important to this graph as they are to these two, right? Now, I still think that's actually a really good idea, and I want you to remember why. Can you tell me, you don't have to draw this, but just look at it. Okay. Can you please tell me, firstly, what's the name of that kind of graph? It starts with an H. It's a hyperbola. Very good. It's a hyperbola. Now that you know, remember it's a hyperbola, can someone tell me the equation of that hyperbola? 
1 over x? 1 over x? Who agrees? 1 over x. Is that a hyperbola? Is 1 over x a hyperbola? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. But how did we know that this hyperbola was 1 over x and not, for example, 2 over x? Or 3 over x? Or 5 billion over x? How did you know? Yeah. Well, uh, you're right. I've left off my asymptotes, which are here and here. But guess what? Even with those asymptotes, this still could be 1 over x or 2 over x or whatever over x. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for how much it bends, right? Now, the problem with this is, sorry, guys, I was totally trolling you. You don't know how much it bends. You need one of these. What do we call them again? It's a point that tells you what about the graph. If I told you this was, for example, 1, 1, now what do you know? You, you know the scale now, yeah? So we call this a point for scale. If I change this to 1, 2, now it's a different graph, okay? So come back to our tan graph. We need to put something on here because this could be tan x. It could be something else. What else could it be? What other equation could it have? It really could have a whole bunch. What do we do to this? I could just multiply it by a number, yeah? I could stretch it out vertically and everything on the graph that you've drawn would look the same. This would still be naught, this would still be pi, this would still be 2 pi. Asymptotes would all be in the same spots, okay? So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Get your ruler out, or if you've got grid paper, this is handy, but um, number one, some of you might not have grid paper. Number two, um, you won't get grid paper in the HSC, so you best not get too reliant on it. Get your ruler out, and then I'd love you to measure the difference the distance, rather, on your graph from 0 to your first asymptote, from 0 to 2 pi. Can you measure that for me? Now, once you've measured it, well, I should measure mine. Mine is just a bit under 10 centimeters. So once you've got that distance, I want you to halve it. Can you halve that distance? Oh, wrong color. Halve it there. Okay. Now, what was the equation of that first asymptote? Can someone tell me? The equation of the first asymptote along. I'll give you a clue. It starts with an x equals. x equals what? What's the value? It's pi on 2, right? So if we've just halved that distance, what's my orange coordinate, my x coordinate there? Pi on 4. It's half of that. Now, I picked pi on 4 very deliberately. If you haven't already got your calculator there, right? Get your calculator. And just to make sure you're convinced, because we can do this a variety of ways, but this is just one of the quickest ones, you might want to remember. Make sure your calculator is in radians, put into the right mode. And then I'd love you to please put in for me tan of pi on 4. What do you get? Make sure you're in radians. That's 10 of 45 degrees, which maybe is one. Oh, does that trigger memory for you? That's one, right? So now that value there is one. Okay, so rather than just like pick a value somewhere vertically and say, I hope that's one, right? One happens at a specific spot, pi on four. Just like this is a spot you've got to know, pi on two and one. This is a spot you've also got to know, pi on four and one. You can use your calculator to help you, but you've got to know it somehow, okay? <laughs>